My Lufa trellis was one of my favorite parts of the garden this year. Walking under it made me feel like I was a kid again, allowing my imagination to go wild. This space felt like magic, and I couldn't be happier with how it turned out this year. A few weeks back, we had a few nights below freezing, and I knew it was going to take out these plants. So beforehand, I harvested all my green loofahs that didn't have a chance to dry out yet. I still had over 40 loofahs that would have gone to waste, but I saw a few ways to process these into sponges, so I figured let's try it out. After letting these sit on a shelf in my basement for a few weeks, I finally got to them. I will say I probably should have gotten to these a week sooner as I had five of them starting to rot, but life got busy and losing a handful I'm really not concerned with. I will say processing loofah is 10 times more work while it's green versus if you can let them dry out on the vine, but I love this option for situations like mine or for others that live in shorter growing seasons and they want to grow their own loofah sponges. I simply started by whacking them as hard as I could on the cement until the skins started to break open. At this point, I could see the sponges starting to peek through. Once they were cracked open, this was kind of where the real work began. The skins were thick and they were hard to get off, but once you got to that point, there was a ton of seeds and gunk that needed to be cleaned out as well. Having a hose with a jet setting really helped with this step. This took a few hours. I was completely soaked by the end of it. But after a few rounds of cleaning each loofah, I brought them into my garage and hung them so they could start to dry. You can see all the little bits in my hair and all on my hoodie. This was a very messy process. Two days later, most of my loofahs were still slightly damp, which was perfect to mold them into some sponges. I think it'd be fun to gift some of these for the holidays. For each loofah that I made into a square, I started off by cutting a slit down one of the sides and then I started to cut out the spine, which is the full middle portion where the seeds are held in the loofah. Here you will see me cut off some of the extra loofah and I did that on some of them and I left it on some of the others. When I left it, it created a fluffier sponge and I like the variation of both. I started to fold mine into my desired shape, and this can take some messing around, but once you get your desired shape, the loofah stays pretty well, making it really easy to sew together. Here I'm using a crochet weaving needle and some thick cotton twine. I absolutely love how these turned out and I also love seeing some of my goals for gardening this year come full circle. I've mentioned a lot this year how it was a harder growing season for me with a lot of things, but Lufa thrived and it was one of the highlights to this season. Now every time I use them I will think of the beauty the garden shared with me. So this week was a pretty cool week since I finally got to process down some of my loofahs. I planted this loofah, I believe it was mid to end of March of this year. So it's been a full year thing because I bought the seeds sometime like November or December of last year. I've been planning this for quite some time. So to see something like this come full circle is a really cool moment, especially because I've never grown a crop that I was able to dry and then make something out of. Um, there was a few crops I tried this year. Obviously, there was a few that um, didn't really come up of anything. The loofah was the only thing I was really successful with this year as far as like drying and making crops. I tried broom corn this year because I really wanted to try to make a broom and that unfortunately <laughs> was an epic fail so I really want to try that again next year. So one thing I thought was really cool is I have loofahs here that I actually dried on the vine. I was able to get roughly like 10 I believe. Um, it's close to that. This one here is the only one I still have in skin. I'm really glad I was able to keep one in skin just to show you but the seeds fall out of it. This will peel in seconds. It's 10 times easier than the green ones I will admit but the one thing that's really cool about processing the green ones is the color. So you can see this has none of 
I haven't done any type of bleaching or anything to make this a lighter color sponge, but since it didn't dry and dye, you can see how much lighter it is. So if you're going for, or if you're shooting for a lighter color sponge and you're not wanting to do any type of bleaching or anything like that to your loofah, maybe processing it green is the way you want to go. So if you have dried loofah like this that you dried on the vine, you can wet it down and then just fold them up like I did. It's the exact same process. Um, it's just this one dried on the vines. So I would like to process all of those ones I did green into full blown sponges like this because I'm really, really enjoying this. They're really flexible. They have a lot of grit. They clean really well. I'm so excited about this. One of my most common comments about the loofahs is everyone thought that these came from the sea. And I was under the same impression until about two or three years ago when I first saw my when I first saw a loofah plant being grown and I was like, I have to do that. If you are in an area that suffers from vine board like I do and you really desire like a trellis or some vining type of crop, um, loofahs are vine board resistant. Um, so that was really cool. And I actually grew a butternut squash variety this year. That was a hybrid called honey nut. And the one thing I thought that was really interesting about that honey nut variety is it had a very similar stem in um, vine to the loofah plant, the gourd. So keep that in mind if you have issues with that because I always have and I honestly never knew that loofah would be vine war resistant. Um, I was really hoping for the best. I never did research on it. It was a great little crop for me to do this year. Another thing I want to do with some of these loofahs is to make soap. I've never made soap before, but I am very interested in learning how. Um, so that's going to be a project probably for the winter come like a few weeks, but I'm really excited. I really want to gift these to a few people. I've made vanilla extract through the year. So to give someone like vanilla extract and like a homemade loofah sponge, I'm really excited to do that for the holidays because this is the first year I've been able to do a lot of these fun little crafts. So very excited about this. I really wanted to share the process of the trellis, growing the loofah all the way to sponge. It was a very, very fun season, and I think loofah will forever be in my heart as one of my favorite crops now. As I said before, this was a pretty tough season for a lot of things, but my loofahs shined. And if you didn't have a good season, just know I ethically failed last year with loofahs. My plants only got like maybe this tall. And you guys saw how crazy this trellis was, and that was from two plants. So from two loofah plants, I was able to get roughly, I think it was like close to 50, is a little over 50 loofahs, but I lost those like five. So roughly like mid 40s, that's a lot of loofahs from two plants. They went absolutely crazy and they fit that whole 25 foot trellis. Like I was shocked on how long they trellis and they just kept wanting to grow. They were very prolific. I actually changed the position of my trellis tunnel from my south corner over um, to my far west corner and that seemed to work really well. So I think I might keep that as my loofah area. I don't know if I'm gonna have to grow loofah next year, but I'm growing it anyway because I really, really loved it. Either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing the full circle moment of me making these loofah sponges from the moment I planted them. That was a really cool thing to do this year. I'll see you guys all next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.